The trial is closed. You have a lot of good sources. You've learned to be a reporter like your brother through all of this. Um, what have you, what, if anything, have you learned about what happened in the proceedings today? Uh, well, you know, uh, we found out only yesterday that the trial was going to be closed. We had been petitioning to have it be an open trial so we could get some transparency. Uh, it's actually illegal for any information to come out from the trial, so clearly we're not getting anything uh, from there. But what we do know is the trial uh, first day lasted about two hours. Uh, my mom and my sister-in-law uh, were both went down to the court but were not able to go into the courtroom. Uh, Jason was accompanied by his attorney. There was an English translator there uh, from the government. Uh, and uh, the expectation is on that first day they would read uh, the evidence uh, against him or read the charges against him. Uh, and uh, there would be some conversation that went on around that. Ali, there are two, we've read that there are two pieces of evidence that the Iranian government feels are in some way incriminating of your brother, um, one of which is a visa application and the other of which is a form letter that he sent uh, to the Obama administration. It's a little vague about exactly what those, what, why those documents would be considered incriminating from the point of view of the Iranian officials and what exactly that second document was. Can you shed light on those two things? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, uh, as, as part of our work, we uh, take a look at whatever we could that we thought could be used against Jason. Uh, in those two particular cases, uh, there was a, a process during the transition before President Obama took office to uh, let people go online and uh, send in information, send basically uh, apply for a job almost. Uh, what do you think about uh, the new president and how, how can you help? Jason actually sent a letter. He said, I've lived in Iran. I love Iran. Uh, I, I grew up in the United States. I I love the United States. I want our countries uh, to be more harmonious. How can I help you guys out? Uh, is there anything I can do in the upcoming uh, administration? That's basically the extent of that letter. It was filled out on a web form uh, online, and uh, he did re receive a response which said, uh, this is an automated response. We have received your uh, submission. Just to be clear, are you saying that there was an application for a job? It wasn't officially an application for a job. He was basically saying, look, if you're interested in somebody who understands Iran, understands Iranian culture, and can help you, you know, speak more clearly uh, with the Iranian government, I'd like to help you. Right. Your brother has been there for a number of years. Um, was he uh, worried before this incident? Was he worried that he might have something like this happen to him? Uh, you know, I don't think that anybody could have thought that something like this was going to happen. This is just so far outside the bounds of what had happened before to any prior Western journalist. Jason was meticulous in how he followed the rules. All journalists in Iran are credentialed. Uh, he knew where he could go. Uh, you know, there's a process there. What's your theory then about why he was singled out? Uh, you know, I think it's it's hard to say. Jason, uh, you know, he uh, is one of the only Americans over there uh, that was reporting. Uh, he uh, has a lot of friends uh, and uh, a lot of people think that it might have had something to do with internal politics, uh, trying to get some pressure on the president or something in that country uh, or else something else. We really don't know. When you, when, you, when you folks in the family, when you deal with the administration and, and talk to them, as I'm, I'm sure you have repeatedly over the course of the time that he's been uh, in captivity, um, who, who do you deal with and, and what are the nature of those of the interchanges that you've had with the government about this, the U.S. government? You know, yeah, yeah, we speak with a variety of people in the U.S. government, primarily uh, over in the State Department. Uh, there are folks over there, um, and I've spoken with people at different levels. Uh, we have a contact over there who uh, we talk with. She's uh, very good uh, at getting information from us, as well as uh, helping us uh, reach out to other governments when we need to. So, for example, reaching out to the uh, protecting power, the Swiss, uh, in, in Iran uh, to try and maybe uh, send letters to officials over there things like that. Uh, I've also uh, spoken to folks up on the Hill as well, uh, senators, congressmen, uh, their aides. I uh, was really happy last week to see the uh, unanimous uh, resolution in the Senate uh, calling for the U.S. government to do everything possible to bring Jason and the other Americans home. Are, are there things you've asked the administration to do that they have rebuffed you uh, on and they've told you they would not do? No, not really. We haven't made any uh, specific requests like that. Uh, we've, we've asked them about things we've heard. Maybe we hear a rumor. Uh, is that something that is, is true? Um, those kinds of things. Uh, and when we've wanted to escalate things, we've been able to escalate them. Can you tell me how you feel about Iran now? 
you know, I think I feel the same way as I did before. The people there really love Americans. They're really nice. Um, and and uh, the government does what it wants to do. Um, uh, you know, they say that they've got a lot of laws and, and they, they choose when they want to follow them and when they don't.